to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay At the set time which God has spoken, listen, there is always a set time. And let me tell you, that set time is not when God determines. The set time is when your faith is ready. He says, today, if you hear his voice, today, if you hear his voice, lift your voice and say, Lord, I make today my set time. I make today, I insist that today is my set time. Don't be careless. I insist. That fire God must die today. My ministry must open today. I insist. I insist. Today is the same time. set time for every captivity in my life my ministry will bow Lord, we ask you tonight to give us strange encounters, give us strange visitations. Your people have come from all over this nation, expecting you to move in a mighty way. Lord, until you help us, we have nothing to offer. So we pray that you help us tonight. Help us tonight. Help us tonight. Help us. Help us tonight. Help us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yesu ya che ya kare Me girma ya che ya kare Yesu ya che ya kare Me girma ya che ya kare That's the word I hear in my spirit Yesu ya che Surely there is an end Surely there is an end. May you my Achea Kare. Yesu Achea Kare. May you my Achea Kare. Yesu Achea Kare.
that's a prophetic word for someone the bible says surely let me tell you hear me hear me we don't cry forever in this kingdom there is a time when god decides to arise as a man of war yes, 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 things the Lord put in my spirit very seriously I want us to please pay attention this will prepare us for the great things God is going to be doing tonight I want to explain a few things um, I began to inquire of the Lord what he would want us to take note of to really experience the fullness of our testimonies and to rise in new dimensions of possibilities and the Lord dropped two things number one the first key the Lord would want us to have tonight and I, I want us to please pay attention because as the word of God comes it is your instrument God is not a herbalist everything happens on the platform of his word the first key tonight that will guarantee the hand of God upon our lives is a lifestyle of true holiness write it down a lifestyle of true holiness that's the first thing the Lord told me if we want to experience new dimensions please pay attention koinonia the reason why so many of us may not rise to that dimension that God desires is because we compromise on the revelation and the reality of a life of true holiness let me tell you something sin has very severe consequences hellfire only being the last but there are many other consequences you will go through here and now and I mean I had a little time with God and you know when God gives words like this I'm not the preacher who fools myself carrying words for people I'm the first when God speaks like this I lock up myself and I cry and I flog it out with God you are a pastor here don't just be a messenger be a benefactor of the things that God is communicating are we together that attitude of pride that makes us think this message is for the people I don't do like that when God gives a word it is first for me first even before the congregation are we together sin is a reproach to any destiny no matter how you want to play around it it will lead you to the same thing listen let me tell you God is not a herbalist God is not a mantra or a genie that you use is not a hexa spell that you use there must be the genuineness of a life I didn't just say a nature a life of true holiness we hide behind the fact that oh holiness is just a nature let me tell you there is both the nature 
and the life of genuine practical holiness isaiah 59 thank you jesus isaiah 59 are you getting blessed already when it stings you you receive it as a prophetic word from god and you rise you don't reject a word when it stings you when it stings you it's a sign that there is a spirit that is taking advantage of that dimension and god wants to set you up isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2 i'd like us to read it please we we'll hurry up those inside and outside one to read behold the lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save uh-huh neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. what's the limitation have separated between you and your god and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear this is not a parable this is a reality and let me tell you, anybody who wants to do business with God, please hear me. You must cultivate a genuine appetite for staying by God's standards. Your humanity notwithstanding. Are we together? Now please don't feel condemned. I'm not condemning you. But God is challenging you. If you want power with God, a lifestyle of genuine holiness is non-negotiable oh but apostle you don't know what has happened around my life that's why you are here you are welcome that's why you are here god specifically spoke to me and now please um this is by no means insulting anybody you know and all of that i know that there are all kinds of people here but the danger of immorality and the filthiness of the flesh write it down the danger of immorality and the filthiness of the flesh the filthiness of the flesh is not just maybe immorality as we know the danger now until you really know god and stay with god you may not understand the spiritual consequences fornication adultery for those who are married and all kinds of immoral things the spirit of god spoke to me that these things will short circuit the genuine grace of god upon our lives now i know that this is painful but if you really came to meet god this is the key tonight a lifestyle of genuine holiness proverbs 28 verse 13 Proverbs 28 verse 13 There is power in admitting your wrong and pouring your heart before God. Foolish people have misled and misguided the church into that understanding that God just forgives by default. Be careful what you hear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Be careful what you hear. Be careful how you are taught. It says he that covereth his sin shall what? Please read your Bible. He that covereth his sin shall. He didn't say he that sins. I read a scripture that really surprised me. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. We are talking about the first requirement. You want to see an upgrade in grace. You want to see God honor you. You want to receive testimonies. A lifestyle of true holiness. Hosea 5.15 Alright, I want us to read. It says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge and seek my face. It says, in their affliction they will seek me. Because inevitably they will attract to their life's affliction. And he says, I will return to my place. Because the Bible says, the word of God does not return until it is accomplished. But it says that there is a mechanism that can stop the word from working in the life of a man. He says, I will return to my place until the word they acknowledge. Acknowledge. 
when you have the humility to acknowledge that you need help you will get help from god but if you allow yourself to dance in all this rubbish that people bring that makes themselves comfortable i'm telling you this look let me tell you you see when someone is talking to you find out first whether there is a measure of the result the person is trying to propose to you are we together there are people who know nothing about the anointing yet they say so much they make a lot of noise and 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 they they mock the body over the anointing the anointing is a priceless commodity a lifestyle of genuine holiness flee immorality fornication adultery if you are married hallelujah the filthiness of the flesh you can't be smoking and prophesying something is wrong are we together now i'm not condemning you that's why we are here this is a family but but we must deal with it you can't swallow all kinds of things and codeine and all it's called the filthiness of the flesh if that price is too much for power then forget about it forget about genuine anointing i will it says i will return to my place till they acknowledge two scriptures and then we'll move to the next session galatians 5 verse 19 to 21 is god speaking to someone very quickly please media help us galatians 5 we have a lot to do tonight I want you to maximize this night and that's the first instruction from God to all of us. I like us to read. Now, please give us give us amplified media that we have amplified. Is it possible? One to read. Now the doings, practices of the flesh are clear, obvious. They are what? What's number one in the list? Hold on. I'm just, I'm just trying to... Let me tell you something. I wish I were not the person who was going to talk about this thing. But you see, immorality is not just an act. Immorality is a spirit. It does something to your spirit man are we together and so when you find out that this is a challenge in your life assuming that it will be solved by itself is a dangerous thing you run to god are we together you run like the deer panting after the water brooks and he lists all of them first john verse 9 the last scripture on that wise one to read everyone that we have seen and confess our sins is what hold on he is when there is a condition there is a condition he says if we confess our sins um you can go back to amplify god is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness in fact verse verse 8 when you read from verse 8 um can we just back up one verse it says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us then the next verse says but if we confess confess is not these religious things that people do around but let me tell you something there are times you need to stay with god that's why i encourage retreats write it if you are writing look if you are a christian i am personally convinced that any christian who does not have periodic seasons of retreat will never be able to last retreats are powerful times of self-examination and exposition it doesn't mean you have to do anything bad the light of his glory comes upon you and god steps the bar
and blesses you and anoints you. The issue of sin must be dealt with. How do we solve the problem of sin? Number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. There are many church goers. There are heads of departments. There are pastors. There are so many people who have not given their lives to Jesus Christ. Please, let me tell you something. Trying to receive something from a God you do not want to commit your life to is self-deceit. Are we together? There are people here, for instance, who have come. They may not be ready to accept the Lordship of Jesus, but they want the healing that flows from him. The ultimate solution to the sin problem is a genuine encounter with Jesus Christ. Are we together? The Bible says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, right? And it says this life is in his son. It says he who has the son. You cannot have life by ignoring the son. It is by embracing the son that you have eternal life. Say amen. amen. You must be born again. The next key is in John 8 34. John 8 34. And in Romans 6 23. I just want to deal with this because it came very seriously upon my spirit and I believe it's a challenge for us. Now I want you to read it. John 8 34. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whoever commits sin is a war. That means under the dominion. It didn't say whoever commits sin is a bad person. But that you have allowed the dominion of sin over your life. 6, 23 of Romans. 6, 23. Romans 6, 23. One to read. Hold on. Change the word wages to salary. Are you ready? One, two, read. Again. If you work for me and I don't pay you, am I a good person? Are we together? If you work for me, what do you expect at the end of the month? Even if there is strike, you expect that there is a, a what? So the Bible says, whosoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Meaning sin is his master. And the Bible says, that man pays. What does he give? Death there does not just mean ceasing to live. Affliction. Are we together? Woes. Curses. All kinds of things that can come upon a man's life and impede his progress. The salary of sin is death. But it says, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus our Lord. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, grace, grace, grace. If you are not praying this prayer, you are really arrogant. Pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. Grace, oh God. The vicissitudes and the challenges. As a pastor, pray. As a married man, pray. Don't say I'm married. As a married woman, pray. There are spirits that hunt only married people. Grace. Kaba shabarata kata. Zekete lekete bakoroto subada baladaba. Shabarakato zobredi shekerita korabada baladaba. I mortify my body by the grace of God as an instrument of righteousness. Pray. Don't let the devil condemn you. But please cry unto God. Say, Lord, I need your power genuinely in my life. I need your power. I need your glory genuinely in my life. Fresh unction. Hallelujah. And please hear me. In case you are here and there is any sickness, any disease that came as a result of sin, I have good news for you. Our God is still a merciful God. You hear what I'm saying? 
our God is still a merciful God. Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Write this down. Practice periodic self-examination. Especially when you think everything is alright with you. Listen to a secret that I give you. Practice periodic. I don't care who you are. Practice periodic self-examination. Self-examination. Number two. Send out of your life unapologetically people whose atmospheres cause you to walk in sin. Roommates, you must not stay in their room. Hear what I'm telling you. I'm giving you a big secret. Send them away. I'm staying with my uncle. That's why. Stand up. Let me tell you, if you get out of that house trusting God, the God of your salvation will arise for you. Hallelujah. A guy who asks you out, sister, and says, while you are thinking about answering him, you should be sleeping with him first before you decide whether you go out with him or not. Don't insult him. Run away and cut the spirit. Koinonia is quiet tonight. You want power, you want miracles. God is not a herbalist. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's be sincere with ourselves. If you really want to see the outstretched arm of God, you have to cry and say, God, help me. And in case you are here arrogantly saying, I'm free, yet, yet, the Bible says, let him that thinks take heed. Immorality, smoking, drinking, is sad that you have to say these things. But there are people, we have all kinds of explanations. The alcohol, the Bible said in the New Testament, the Greek word for wine is alcoholic. I don't care what justification you bring to be a drunkard. A drunkard is a period. The Bible says wine is a mocker. I take it once in a while. You will suffer once in a while. Because it's when your breakthrough is coming that the temptation for liquor will come. Are we together? How about pornography? How about masturbation? Oh, I don't sleep around. It's a spirit. Why am I saying these things? These are the things that authorize the power of darkness. Please, don't say, especially this masturbation thing and pornography. I'm not condemning you. But don't ever, if anybody has preached to you and has said it's alright, Joshua Selman is telling you it's a, it's, a, it's a cancer of the spirit. That's why you find out your prayer life dries. No matter what happens. But I'm still healing the sick. Continue. Are we together? I want and I'm trusting God that there will be maximum breakthrough. But we have to be serious. Mean business with God. Mean business with God. The Allah sends me money once in a while. Please delete his number tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The military officer, it's not every time. It's three times a year. Delete his number even before we start ministry. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. There is something that can make a man's prayer to not reach heaven. 
if I had cherished iniquity in my heart. So when we begin to pray tonight, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, in this miracle service, this addiction is over. I have to end it. Are we together? I burn all my MBs, I buy my phone, and I spend all my MB watching nonsense. Naked photos, all kinds of things. No, it's a spirit. See, anything you cannot control is a spirit, including food. Don't think I'm just talking. I'm, I'm going to come. Everybody has a slice in this pie. There must be something that relates to you. I don't have a problem with women. Food. You can't fast. Because of food, many of us would rather remain in the same spiritual level forever. Let me tell you, gluttony is as bad as fornication. I hear what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. You can talk about true power that puts situations and circumstances in command and your entire life. Do you know there are people that eat whether or not they are hungry once they see it. The same way a man sees a woman and cannot resist her. You see food and you look at ah, whose own is this? You put one bones, you add another one. You are eating before, until it finishes. There's no rest. It's an urge. You need help. You need help. Are we together? And all kinds of variations of addictions. Those who sleep with little children alone, put a naked adult woman, they will pass as if they didn't see her. Children. Men and men. Women and women. My name is Joshua Selman. Let me tell you, if you don't deal with these things, you will never go far. You will rise up as usual, but ask Samson, I will arise as before. And all of a sudden, his glory gone. Am I condemning you? No. Will I be quiet about it? No. Because you must receive something tonight. So that you will not be healed and delivered and the demons even mock you. Before prayer, they just jump out and wait for you. That's what happens to a lot of people. Is it not in your Bible? I'm going to share with you on that. When a spirit leaves a man, what does it do? It leaves him forever. The Bible says Satan departed from Jesus for a season. Came back again when there was another pressure. And Jesus started negotiating. Mass, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup. Can we negotiate another way? But he overcame. He said, nevertheless, not my will. Hallelujah. Please, I want us to be sincere with ourselves tonight as we cry before God. I know what I've said is very uncomfortable to many of us, but this is the key. When you pray, you clear out that way. Satan does not like what I'm preaching. It takes a lot of courage to preach what I'm telling you. But that's the key. Are we together? But I think I'm okay. No, opportunity has not yet been created. So instead of sitting down to say, I hope my roommate is hearing. Uh -uh. There's no roommate. There's no, I hope my husband is hearing. God, I, God, apostle, God bless you. This stupid man, thank God he came for koinonia. I'm talking to you. There is no pointing fingers. You see, that spirit that exempts you from the word of God. Uh, that sense of self-righteousness that makes you feel, I am okay. Talk to Ejimi. Uh, or talk to Kenny or promise is the same spirit that destroys people. I'd like you to lift up your voice in one minute. Koinonia, cry before the God of heaven and say, Lord, it must be broken. Addictions must be broken. I don't care what you read in the internet about them. Mandalikereosopaya. That alcoholism must be broken. I can't keep destroying my body. Pornography. Masturbation. I need you. I need you. Every hour. I need you. Come bless me. 
now my Savior, I come to Thee. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee. Every hour, shake it, take it, take it, take it, Come bless me now, my Savior, I come to my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and righteousness. Pray, shake it, take a I've come to call that spirit a liar. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All on the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Listen. Look at me. Some of you can do anything for money. If you must sleep with an animal for money, you would do it. For as long as there is money tied to it, you throw away your Christianity. If it's money, no problem. As long as you will give me money. Someone sent me a text. Uh, was it yesterday or day before yesterday? I was in the middle of a very serious, intense prayer time. And then his text came. And he said they wanted to give him a job. But they said he should give like advance. Like pay some money. So that they can process it. And I told him, I said, don't you do that. You cannot mix. You can't. If you are paid for it. Where then is the place of God? Please don't say I'm not a Nigerian. I'm not a stupid person. I know what I'm saying. Whatever God cannot do in my life, oh, let nobody do it. He said, lest you will say I made Abraham rich. Who told you God is not able? You see, all these carnal things we keep doing, we edge God out. When it comes to real issues, we act as if God is not alive. Oh, if God cannot do it, let it not be done. No. I want you to pray. And say, Lord, whatever I do not have discipline for, break it out of my life. Pray. Pray. Shabakataya. The secret for fire in a ministry. The secret for fire in a family. Is the secret for fire in a life. It's a painful reality. But it's a key that will take you high. Habarata kaparuto zobrendi gela pora susi abahata. Kapada kataya. Grace. Break every habit. Pray. I break any challenge. I call you by your name. Pray. Masturbation, you are a spirit. Pornography, you are a spirit. Gluttony, you are a spirit. Smoking, drinking. Grace tonight. Grace from the throne. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point on that. Listen. For many people, I have found out that we are not interested in paying the price to create the atmosphere. Everybody say atmosphere. Are we together? You are a brother, anybody, any sister can hop into your house any day, any time, anyhow. Are we together? Lie down on your bed loosely and carelessly. You don't care. 2 a.m. in the night, still in your house. What are you doing? We're in a relationship. Nonsense. 
You are not the first to get married. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You must create discipline. If you are friends with a roommate and the roommate is bringing boys all the time to your room, negotiate. And brother can say, if that agreement, if you cannot reach a consensus like that, find a way of getting out of that place. Someone cannot be sleeping with a lady you are there watching. You will only watch for one month. I assure you. Atmospheres. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. There are things that can be discussed on phone. Discuss it on phone. When we were staying together, Ejimi will tell you, when we were staying together, as years ago, there was an unwritten rule. Let me tell you, these are some of the rules that helped us. God is my witness. My younger sister is here. My younger sister has never slept in my house till today. My blood younger sister. Only two people have stayed in my house. One, Ejimi, and one, my younger brother, the, the day he came. Am I stupid? No. Am I a fool? No. It's called atmosphere. It's the price for atmosphere. Someone comes to your room with visitors and says, please, there's a little birthday party. It looks like you are busy today. Can you give us the room? You thought they just celebrated birthday and drank beer and smoked and left. They left spirits. They left influences. Yes, I know what I'm saying. You get into that room, I assure you, it will take the grace of God for you to connect again. How about all kinds of empty movies? A lot of us believers have all kinds of compartments on our phone. There is compartment A, gospel. Gospel means anything that reminds you of heaven. And then there is the B part. When you want to socialize, look, choose ye this day. Whom you will serve. Choose you when. Otherwise. I don't care whether they dip you. In one gallon of oil. I assure you. You will fall down. You will stand up. Satan will be waiting for you there. You will have dreams. They will press nonsense out of you. Shout Jesus. Shout Abraham. Shout any name you know. Nothing will happen. That's what makes us powerless. He told Gideon, said, why have we not seen the miracles of our fathers? He said, take away the idols. My room cannot be a place for somebody to keep beer. Don't take it, but let me use your fridge to make it cold. What are you doing? It's exactly the same thing. Please pray one minute and say, Lord, the price and the unashamedness to create an atmosphere. An atmosphere. Lift your voice. Pray. The price. My room. My room, my house, my office cannot be a place for rubbish. When they want to bribe, it's not in my office. The meeting will not be held in my office. When they want to fake a miracle, it will not be on my pulpit. Pray, pastors. Don't let any dumb dick and Harry just arise and hold the mic on your pulpit and do all kinds of jamborees. I paid the price to create the atmosphere to host the presence of God. Pray, Koinonia. It's part of the meeting. This is already someone's deliverance. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, only, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. 
Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful, 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 faithful. Do this and you will see the power of God in your life in a way that you'll be surprised. Imagine that you are sleeping and all that is playing is a powerful prophecy. Let me tell you what will happen. You will continue listening to it in your dreams. I guarantee you. And that one is powerful because your body that limits the spirit is sleeping. Ah, you will access anointings. You will wake up under a strong presence. I know what I'm saying. Number two, let's hurry up. The second challenge or the second key, I think the rain is settled, so as many, if it's not an interruption, please um, arrange them outside. If they can still squeeze in, that's all right. Number two, let's hurry up, please. The reality of demon spirits and the character of their operation, write it down, is something you cannot ignore and prevail in this life. The reality, demon spirits, alongside the character of their operation. The Bible again and again cautions us and says that we should not be ignorant of his devices. Satan has a way he operates. There is a way, there is a system that Satan operates. Anybody who ignores the reality of demon spirits alongside an, an insight into the character of their operations will pay the price severely. Let's look at two scriptures very quickly. Luke chapter 4, please, verse 14 and 18. Media help us. Luke 4, 14 and 18. The Bible says Jesus took the scroll, right? He, the messianic prophecy. And um, go to verse 15, please. Next verse. 15. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all 16. We are reading down to 18. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Right? What did he read? Then it was given to him. It was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. The Messianic prophecy. 18. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To bind up the broken hearted. To preach what? Deliverance to the captives. There are people under captivity. The reality of demon spirits in our world and the fact that they influence people, Christians and non-believers alike, should not be ignored. Are demons real? The Bible says so. Is Satan real? The Bible says so. Do they oppress people? Yes. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you power, authority. The word there is exousia. Behold, I give you power, Luke 10, 19, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So there is the enemy and the enemy has a measure of power. Are we together? And he says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Look at me, please. Look at me. Koinonia, look at me. Every time Jesus commissioned people, the first thing he told them to do was to cast out demons. Not heal the sick. Cast out demons. Right? When you read, um, let's look at a scripture. Mark, Mark 6. We'll read verse 7, then we'll run to 13 quickly. Mark 6, 7, 13. And he called unto him the 12. Read on, please. It's projected. And did what? And began to send them forth two by two. He gave them power to do what? Clean spirit, unholy spirit. Spirits 
that are out of the influence of the Holy Spirit, they are called unclean spirits. They are everywhere like the air we breathe. They are responsible for the anger problem in people. Are we together? They are responsible for the barrenness in people. They are responsible for delay and retrogression. They are the ones who appear to you in dreams and sleep with you. They are the ones who appear and cause miscarriages. They are called unclean spirits. Now, regardless of the theological stratification, they are still spirits. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against what? Principalities, uh -huh. powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. They are all called unclean spirits. And there are three ways that their, their ministry or their life found expression in the earth. Number one is covenants. It's the most powerful way demon spirits advance their cause. Covenants. Number two is ignorance. Ignorance of the precepts and the principles of God. The light shines in darkness. So when there is no light, darkness remains. Are we together? And then number three, disobedience. 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 Demon spirits are real. A Christian cannot be possessed, but he sure can be influenced. Absolutely. Galatians 5, when you read from verse 16, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit and the Bible. He was talking to the Galatian church, people who had already encountered Christ. Are we together? But this is what he says. This I say then that you walk in the spirit so that you will not gratify what? The desires of the flesh. Then he says the flesh lusted after the spirit. The spirit after the flesh. Two of them are consistently contending. What does that tell you? That you're a Christian does not mean that these demon spirits will not attempt to influence, manipulate, or wage control over your life. There's nothing embarrassing when a Christian is delivered. The operation looks like possession, but it's not possession. And now this is the balance. I'm going to create a balance. Because there are all kinds of prophetic ministries because they do not have a sound word base. Right? And let me tell you something. Even the prophetic and the supernatural is limited by the recipient's understanding of the operation of the word. Are we together? I can be a genuine prophet of God, but because I do not have a sound understanding of scripture, I can look at this beautiful lady looking at me and see a spirit behind her. And based on my interpretation of that vision, I call her a witch. Are we together? And then I fabricate a strategy. And I say, Oga, oh the solution to dealing with this, your wife, seeing that she's a witch, is to leave her. So that is my, that is my advice based on my limitation. It may not be that I saw a wrong vision. But because my vision was not dealt with on the strength of the word of God for correct interpretation. It's not enough to see. Understandest what thou readest. He was looking. He was not understanding. Demons are real. They are here in this place tonight. Are we together? They came with many people. They came with many families. Many well-meaning people carry them. Our job is to separate you from them. That's what deliverance is. It's a separation. Let me tell you something. In the most authentic definition, deliverance is salvation. Right? The most authentic, in its purest form, deliverance is salvation. It's a complete translation. So every other thing you do is in support of that understanding. Demons are real. Let me tell you, you will be surprised to find out how many things have not been working in your life and can be credited to the ministry of these wicked spirits in our lives. There were many things in my life that didn't used to work for a long time. I tried, I did all I knew to do. But when I realized that, you see, let me tell you something. Because demon spirits have an advantage, hear me? Because demon spirits have an advantage of the realm of the spirit. When you try to fight in the flesh, you will be defeated forever. Every time, at all times, regardless of what you try to do. 
someone promises to help you you go to bed a stranger appears again the person gets up in the morning and tells you i can't remember telling you what i said please get out of my office something made them do so the same way there is an anointing that can call a destiny helper into your life and you say sorry i don't need any help again you say god told me to do it i don't like you but i have to do it because something may that thing whatever thing it is it must come upon you today where men arise to make your life easy hallelujah demon spirits are real don't be embarrassed when you find out that these spirits are leaving you rejoice and listen please don't just fall down and stand up and check yourself and feel embarrassed and then go back no and by the way it has nothing deliverance has nothing to do with falling down and manifesting it has everything to do with the word of God prevailing over your person and casting out every nonsense that is roaming around your life so you may be standing quietly and they are flying out of you flying out of your destiny the, when that I'm teaching you this so that you will know what to expect and know how to appropriate it so that when you leave this place you now expect that that door that refused to open now that you know a spirit caused it you expect it to open so you start saying in the name of Jesus I expect favor I expect favor a woman who has not been able to give birth has not been able to take in husband is well wife is well both of you go to the hospital they say there's nothing wrong as far as they know all right take in madam she cannot take in plants don't need consultation to take it animals don't need consultation as haphazard as they are the law still works because demons are not interested in the animals they are interested in human beings they are interested in your destiny that's why they will refuse that you will not get that child but the devil is a liar tonight what of all those all those lumps and all those nonsense that grow around your body lumps in your breast lump in your stomach lump every part movements around your body what do you think is called the holy spirit does not move in people in a foolish way the holy spirit is 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 he's an intelligent spirit he does not oppress people do you know there are people here who cannot sleep young people you you, you watch them and they are still awake because the moment they close their eyes is a nightmare demons are real the last key number three that the lord will have us tonight to know all of us must possess this if we really need result is your faith your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. Your faith. My faith reaches out to you. And I believe your word. Listen, let me tell you something about faith. Most of us, our understanding about faith is just for reception. But faith is also an instrument of defense. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Therefore, holding forth the shield. Because there are times between prophecy and manifestation you will need to stand. Faith becomes the weapon you use to shield yourself. That when another word comes and says, Kai, can you imagine Pastor Alpha, is this thing really working? And then the shield of faith, you lift it. And he said, no way. I know that my Redeemer liveth is working. If it's working, show me the evidence. Faith is the substance. Of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He says above all. Taking the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench. 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 The fiery darts of the enemy. Listen. Faith is the result of an understanding. Faith is the result of an understanding. It produces persuasion. It's from the Greek word pistis. Conviction based on an understanding. He says, but I know whom I have believed. 
and I am persuaded, just like I'm persuaded that someone's testimony will turn around, I mean, somebody's life will turn around tonight. I am persuaded. Listen, it's not just what you do that produces result, but the faith that backs what you do. The conviction that backs what you do. Faith is powerful. The Bible says by it, the elders obtain a good report. So if you need a good report, you will need that faith to obtain it tonight. And there are many of us who are trusting God for good reports. You want to change the doctor's report? You want to change every kind of nonsense report that the devil has brought. It will take faith. It will take faith. Conviction. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it everyone. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe in the power of God. I believe that nothing is impossible for God. And tonight. God. Through his spirit. Will birth my testimony. I believe that with all my heart. I came in. There were people in Abuja. My Bible. Uh, at the back of my Bible is full of all kinds of people's prayer requests. You cannot imagine people dropping their prayer requests. Apostle, please as you are going back, can we drop our prayer requests? All the way. Because there is a God that answers prayers. Please hear me, Koinonia. Tonight, like we prayed earlier on, I want you to get angry with the situation in your life. You see, I cannot make you tired of it. I can only encourage you. He said, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. The day you are tired, you will change. Let today be that day. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Lord, my time has come. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, this health thing, I can't remain sick forever. No. This SS genotype, this HIV, this cancer. Abarato so Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll begin to minister. I'd like you to say, Lord, grace to not doubt you tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point in our lives. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, whatever must come upon my life for me to move forward. Hold on. Let it come. And whatever must leave me. I have no loyalty to you. I don't care where you came from. Tonight I part ways with you forever. Lift your voice and pray. anointing that must land upon my life today. Every grace, every spirit, every dimension tonight you must come upon my life and everything that must leave me. I'm tired of any luggage upon my destiny. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Coin on are you praying? Those online, make sure you are praying. Right where you are at your home, so wherever you are streaming from. Hallelujah. 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 One of the graces I'm trusting God to come upon our life is grace for accelerated advancement. Listen, listen. There are many of us, our pace of movement is slow. You can't look at your life and say, A, B, C has happened within this time. It's not a good testimony. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I must move. Oh, I must move. There must be advancement. The overflows. Make sure you are praying. God is sharing you where you are. Yes, oh God, I'm parting ways forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. You must contend with prophecy. Oh, this bad luck upon my life must leave. I was not cursed like that. Even if it's a curse, it must go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a war unto them who are at in Zion. There is enough function tonight to deliver the result you desire, except you are not interested. If you truly are interested and you are angry enough, Tonight is not the time to spectate and pinch and gist. Anybody does that kind of thing for you tonight, know that the spirit is using that person. You can't come here and waste your time. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you. I'm about to speak. Please, I want you to pray. Mention every negative thing that you know has happened, patterns in your life that you know must change and say, God arise for me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it must go over my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 Before God deals with our lives, we are going to be praying first and foremost that God will deal with our families. See, let me tell you something. It's not your fault that you came from that family. But it's your fault if you allow what came from there to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying, oh Koinonia. Believe what I'm saying. I love you too much to not lie to you. There are, there are ties and strongholds that are stopping people from rising. Lift your hands, everybody. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Lift your hands. 
I want to pray. Now listen. Don't get too used to the fact that it's just about speaking and then people fall under the anointing and come be serious while prayers are going. Because it is at the word of God they respond. They are listening to me, I'm speaking. But until the command is given, there is nothing to confirm. I want to pray. Many of you will be very surprised. Open up your spirit. It's time for God to visit you and visit your families. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit pointed arrows. Listen. Pointed arrows. Pointed arrows. And on those arrows I see like papers placed on the arrows containing the names of people, names of families, names of territories. That's what the Lord is showing me right now. And we're going to pray. Listen, the power of God is going to come very strongly upon people. It's, it's not just you, but your family. Are we together? And once that happens, know that the time has come. You pray it and declare that deliverance. Lift your hands. I want to pray now. Father, you brought us here to change lives change testimonies hallelujah hallelujah god is giving me a very crazy instruction just lift your left hand be stupid i've started my stupidity just follow me quietly just lift your left hand up to god and let me do the speaking you don't have to say anything Please, all those who I'm going to speak to now that the power of God comes on them, let's begin to have them outside. <sighs> Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. My God, I'm seeing so many people. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just responding to the Spirit. Lord, you ask us to lift our left hands up. Whatever that means. There are people. I see fire right now. It's going to begin to come on people. Lord, the moment that comes on their family, let there be massive deliverances. At the count of four, that will happen now. One, two, three, four. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out right now. Inside, outside. I'm seeing the spirit of God. There's fire. Moving to families. Please let's save time. Shabbat At the word of the Lord. I place the word of the Lord. Upon that situation of witchcraft. Inside, outside. It's over, it's over, it's over. It's over. I come with a word of prophecy. I prophesy as I've been commanded. Miracles. Deliverances for families enough is enough oh God bring them there are so many people outside so many people outside all the overflows I see miracles it's like fire it's like fire hallelujah keep your hands down I'm seeing fire and it's going to come upon the heads of people. And the Lord is saying it is still the deliverance. Lord, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Right now, all over the congregation. I prophesy it like fire. I see like an eruption. A volcanic eruption coming on the heads of people. The heads of people. Shake it, Where you are, the fire will meet you there. Where you are, where you are, the enemy has done this. We command every havoc, we command every havoc. I tell you, I see deliverance for many families. 
Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Causing the tragedies. In my family. Be exposed now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. As you are praying. The power of God will come upon you. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. Be exposed. The spirits eating up finances, eating up joy, eating up peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see written on this pulpit altars, and I want to pray. An altar is a platform erected by men that grants access to spiritual operations. Altars, 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 altars. At the count of seven, I tell you many people, this is not just families now. One, two, three, four, get ready. Five, six, seven, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Altars catch fire. Altars catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shake it, take it, poro sotoba. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to call situations. The moment I call them, all those who are victims of it, the power of God will come upon them. Please, we are going to be fast. Right now I pray the spirit of failure upon people. I'm seeing it. Lord, wherever they are, right now, at the count of three, let there be an exposition. One, two, Three, go, go, go. Failure, failure, failure. Causing failure in lives. Failure in destinies. Failure in ministries. Failure in business. Failure in academics. Every form of failure, fire is coming on it right now. Fire is coming on it right now. Inside, outside. No, you can't stand it. It's your deliverance. It's your word. It's your prophecy. It's your word. That's why you came. Failure. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm seeing chains. And the Lord is saying, let delay leave my people. That's what I'm hearing. Lord, where are those whose lives have been under one spot? Inside and outside. At the count of three, I like you to shout, Jesus, delay is leaving now. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Delay, delay, delay of all kinds, of all kinds. 
Harato soto pekete. Delay. Delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. Be broken now. Now. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her go. I break that chain now. 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 That chain of delay. That chain of delay is broken over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is breaking delay. Listen. Hallelujah. I've prayed this prayer in this place before. And the Lord is asking me to pray it again. That the destinies of men can be exchanged. So that you are walking. But you are not living your destiny. It's like you are living another person's life. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Please take this prayer seriously. It will do wonders in your life. Lift your hands. Inside and outside. And you watch what will happen now. Lord, I pray. My God, I'm telling you, all I'm seeing in this place is fire. Any man here, any woman whose destiny has been exchanged so that the life you are living is not your blueprint right now. Let the exchange, let there be another exchange, another exchange, another exchange. The power of God is coming on people right now. Right now, right now, release their destiny. Release that mother's destiny now. Release that mother's destiny now. My goodness. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. You can't leave another person's script. Every witchcraft, every manipulation. I cause it now. I cause it now. I cause it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for people with strange movements in their body. I tell you, I feel fire. It's like people are literally bathing in fire. Strange movements. I want to pray. There are many ladies, many mothers under this category. Right now in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Every stranger, there is a lady, you feel a physical snake, physical snake moving on your body. But right now in Jesus name, at the count of three, fire from the throne. Fire from the throne. I command those spirits roaming around the bodies of God's people. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Go now. Leave their bodies. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sisters lift your hands. I want to pray. A very powerful prayer for our sisters. The devil will prefer. To get one woman. To ten men. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, no power will stand. Something is about to jump out of somebody's life. Ah, yeah, yeah. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Let her go right now. Your destiny must open up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain. Lift your hands, sisters.
there are many ladies here under several oppressions that's why many things are not working but sisters as surely as the lord lives at the count of three i like you to shout jesus you will be surprised to see what will happen to you are you ready one two three deliverance for you right now deliverance help them my goodness please help them gates 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 be broken gates be broken papataya gates be broken gates be broken gates be broken i'm praying it again lift your hands ay, ay, ay. every devil that came here with you must let you go lift your hands there are sisters there is already a programming on your destiny to fail a programming to be barren who is this god that can look into time wherever they are at the count of three may the power of god fish them out one two three take that fire take that fire take that fire i open your destiny every lady every sister you are a gate you are a gate in the realm of the spirit mighty deliverance mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough is over is over is over by the power of the holy ghost over 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 Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the brothers. Lift your hands. Listen, let me tell you. There is a spirit that makes men not to be productive. Hear me. It's a, it's, it's a mighty deliverance that will happen to many men right now. Pay attention. There are men who are just going old. There's nothing happening in their lives. It's not your fault. There are keys that have been withheld from you. But that thief must be exposed. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Ancestry. That's the first thing we are dealing with the brothers. Brothers, lift your hands. I want to pray. Many of you will be surprised to see what happens. Every spirit of ancestry, every spirit of inheritance over any brother here, stopping his advancement at the count of three, some of you will be very surprised. That fire will come on you. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Take it. Take it, take it, that fire, help them please, help them, my goodness, Kaparata Kata, brothers are coming under this unction, it's time to move forward, it's time to move forward, help them, I cause that spirit, I cause that spirit, I cause that spirit, hallelujah god does this all the time and i don't know why god is doing this again <laughs> ah. if he did it before he can do it again Sing.
listen. I see something strange happening. Strange happening. Strange happening in the spirit. And I'm seeing the spirit of the Lord moving. And God is saying he's visiting Easterners. Easterners, evil people. That's what I'm seeing. There are altars that need to be broken. Please pay attention. I'm about to pray right now. Wherever they are, always he will do it. You are from the east, get set. Be sensitive. Come on, you shouldn't be doing that. Shaparatoka paratia. Eastern Lord, wherever they are, it will come like fire on you. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you now. The Spirit of God goes to the east. The Spirit of God goes to the east and is bringing deliverance. Deliverance. Strange deliverance. Evil people. Strange deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost is visiting your soil, visiting your foundation, visiting your soil. If it did it before, it could do it again. Same God back then, same God right now. If it did it before. Abia, 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 Abia said, Shaka Tabarata, Abia, Abia, the Spirit of God is moving across Abia, miracles, breaking foundations. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then. Hallelujah. Many of you wonder why God does these things. There are signs and wonders. He steps into, you will see the testimonies that will come from this thing. Strange visitation. Lift your hands, everybody. Joshua Selman. God, please. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm walking in the spirit and I see a map. And the Lord is asking me to jump upon it. And I see Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. That's what I see. Right now, Lord, at your word, move. Southern Kaduna. Visiting men and women. That's what the spirit of God is saying. I speak it. I place the word of God upon it. Lord, go to that region right now. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna from Saminaka to Zonkua. Everywhere. Move. Let the power of God touch people. Liberty for territories. Liberty for territories. No matter where you are, I'm telling you. Southern Kaduna, fire is falling. Fire is falling upon your soil upon your soil southern kaduna southern kaduna that's what i see southern kaduna connected to southern kaduna there is a miracle happening altars in southern kaduna i come against you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle leave god's people now Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this operation of the Spirit, I found it working in my life, is powerful. God just calls a territory, and everyone is like a digital spiritual system. It's not something you just do by guesswork. 
is the spirit of God. The spirit of God. The spirit of God. God is still touching Kaduna people. I'm still hearing it in my spirit. God is still touching Kaduna people. There's no escape. Any family tied to any altar comes under fire. Any Kaduna family married to Kaduna living in Kaduna state Hallelujah. Please lift your hands while still praying. I want to pray for students now. Something miraculous will happen here now. I want to pray for students because I see conspiracy to short circuit people's performances. I'm going to pray. But there is a God in heaven with an all-seeing eye. And there is an unction he can release. I'm going to pray. Listen, let me tell you. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that will come. The way God is working this night is very supernatural. If the power of God comes upon you, I want you to know that an angel is doing something over your result. Just hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Father, there are people whose results need to be worked upon divinely. And where are they? I see almost 45 people. Right now at the count of three. One. Results. Two. Three. Let the angels begin to move. As they move, it will affect you. As the power of God touches you, your result is being worked upon. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Inside and outside. Results, results. Carry of us. Receiving the mercy of God. Receiving the mercy of God. God upgrading CGPS. Upgrading CGPS. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. CGPS. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Supernaturally. By the creative power of prophecy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to let you smile. Hear me. That joy and laughter will not come out of your mouth. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. I bring that thing under fire. Amen. I bring it under fire. Amen. I bring it under fire. Amen. Shake a ta ta ta. I bring it under fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands and be silent if you can. A miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing letters in the spirit. And these are employment letters. Hold on. Just keep your hand. Just do what I'm asking you to do. You will be surprised. Many of you for you and for your loved ones. The Lord is just asking. Just lift your hands. Father, at least 17 people inside outside there are up to five people online supernatural jobs may the angels of breakthrough take this word to the people right now right now right now right now receive it receive those letters in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit, in the spirit. for you for your loved ones I don't care what they read. I don't care what they have. We give them jobs. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I 
I see at least four people. Three of them are ladies in the congregation. Your mothers are due for promotion. But they've done everything they know to do. As I'm speaking right now, an anointing will come upon you to signify what he's doing to them. Lord, go ahead. Locate them. Promotion. I force it. I force it now. I force that promotion. Take it. Carry it for your mothers. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. The judgment of God. going to pray for the sick but um, there are two women I want to pray for here you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb now I know there are many people listen there are two women particularly one of them the anointing of please no standing for wife no standing for anybody if you are not the person um, sit down if you are not married, don't come here. Praise God. Please. The two women by themselves. I'm going to pray. That lady, oh, let me let me let me pray for her. That devil, let her go. Don't disturb us, don't waste our time. Out! Out now! Out in the name of Jesus. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. You are living, release her family. Release our destiny right now. The noise maker, out you go and don't waste our time in Jesus' name. I set her free in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen. We are going to pray for those two women. I don't know if there are here, the two of them here. There's one of them. Um, I'm seeing one of them. The anointing of the spirit is going to come upon her. I don't know who that person is. But there's one. Please, we have such people. We have to be fast. If I mention your case, once we give you one minute, there's no response. We have to move so that God can help us, please. Except if they are outside there, then that's all right. The married women that need the fruit of the womb, we have to pray for them right now. Praise the Lord. How many of us are trusting God for healing miracles in our bodies? Let me see your hands. I know many of our mothers are in this category. No matter what the case is, who is stand up? Come on down. The power of God will come upon that person. Please make sure they are married, though. Please stand up, stand up, madam. It's okay. Um, madam, madam, it's okay. Please. Madam, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many years have you been married? 20 years. 20 years. No child. Look at me. 20 years. Madam, look at me. Look at me. It's okay. 20 years of marriage. If, if that woman gave birth to a child by now, that's the other person, right? Wariness. Why am I seeing her? I'm seeing chains around her stomach. You must remove it now. Remove it now. You are a devil of darkness. You hear my voice. Take off that chains now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as barrenness. It's nonsense. When a spirit sits on your stomach, there's no way a child will come. If you like, do whatever. You go to India and come back. You only waste money. But there is a God. Madam, please look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you here with your husband? You came. And you decided to. Where is your husband? Okay. okay, look at me, madam. Do you believe God can give you a child? I believe that's why I came. It's okay, it's okay, madam. Look at me. Look at me, madam. 
place your hand on your stomach. I want to pray. How many of us believe this woman will come and stand and testify? If you are doubting this, you've not been in Koinonia. Madam, look at me. I want you to shout as loud as you can. I receive. Just shout it. I receive this God, ba. Let me tell you that is that is not working in your life does not mean it's not available. I've told you this thing. You have to believe there are dimensions in God. This woman you see will come and stand here with her child. Why is she here, madam? Why are you here? You are married for how many years? Give her the mic. How many years? Ten years. The anointing is on you. Lay your hands on your stomach. Look at me, madam. Shout, I receive, if you believe. I receive. <laughs> There's something leaving your body now. Let it go. You are a devil. Let her go right now. Something is coming out of your stomach. That's what I'm seeing. That's what has stopped your barrenness. Go and have your child. In the name of Jesus. Go and have your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me pray. Madam, make sure you people return with your testimonies. You want to pray. Is your husband here? Husband, please come, sir. I want to pray for you. Marriage is between two people, not three people. I look in the spirit and I'm seeing three people. Somebody is a stranger in this equation. Please come, sir. I'm seeing a third person in the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. I'm seeing a third person in the realm of the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. The devil is a liar. We are going to pray. Please hold your hands together. Just in one of your hands. Yes, I want to pray. To Watch what happens to you. <sighs> there is a name, oh. There is a name. There is a name. Leave them. Leave them. Leave them, leave them, leave them. There is a name. Let her go. Strangers, Kabataya. What God has joined together, I'm prophesying. That's why I said, hold your hands. Anybody whose hand is not held physically should not be in this equation. Therefore, I prophesy. Any stranger, release what you are put in her stomach now. I'm seeing a snake. That's what I see in the spirit. I'm looking and I'm seeing a serpent. In the name of Jesus, release her now. Release her now. Kaparatakaya. Marriage was done legally. Therefore, you are an illegal occupant. Release her now. Let there be miracle children. Miracle children. I'm seeing a lady in the crowd. You are standing in for your sister who has been married for five years. Who is that? I want to pray for that person. Five years. Your sister has been married five years. No child. No child. You are the one. Where is she? What's her name? Deborah. Where is she? She's in Kenya. How many years? Five years. No child. No child. My brother has six years. And you, the devil, wants to give you four years. Or oh, cancel it. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny? My destiny today. Come and change my destiny. destiny today. Destiny changer. You are a destiny changer. Come and change my destiny. My destiny today. Please don't just come out at will. What's it? Hold on, hold on. Coordinate yourself. Who is this? Hold on, hold on. Leave them, leave them. It's okay. Victor, leave her. It's okay. Calm down. How many years? Nine years. Huh? Nine years. Where is she? 
Just calm down. I know I'm praying for the sisters. That's why I'm praying. Because you see, listen. <laughs> just follow what I'm doing. You will be surprised to see what will happen. The Bible, the Bible does not allow you to test whether you are pregnant first before you marry. Is that true? So there is no way you know. You just marry and then find out. It's a disaster for a man, a family to pay the price, pay dowry and get married and then there's that nonsense so lay your hands i want to pray for you let's attack it in advance if you care for the prayer lay your hands for some of you god is saving you years of misery i'm seeing a number 21 and this is at least 21 people and families involved father visit them now visit them now visit them now i'm praying a miracle is happening to your womb visit them now visit them now Visit them now. Right now, everything that wants to plant barrenness in your stomach, for every lady here and those watching online, I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Hold that baby. You. Hey, Jimmy, please give her that child. Just hold her so she doesn't fall. Just hold that baby. You are holding this child as a prophetic symbolism for your sister, for you when you get married, and for every other person, and for two other people who are in the congregation. This prophecy is connecting them. Where are they, oh God? Where are they, oh God? The anointing of the Spirit will locate them now. Right now, two of them in the congregation for this miracle. For this miracle. For this miracle. Daddy, sir, please let me talk to you. Just give a few minutes. You and the madam close to you. Mommy, please come. You are an usher, but you are praying. Come. Let God answer your prayers. This lady is talking to the Lord. What was the issue? It's my sister. You are asking the Lord to do what? Later, she has put to bed in time. But none of them is alive. Because I'm seeing a spirit. As soon as she's giving birth, this is like an antelope. It eats the children. As in, it's the child. Sometimes, most of the children will grow. Nine months, you give birth. Then they will last for only a few minutes and they will die. Hold my hands. Where is she? Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Where is she? What's her name? Ladi. Ladi. Ladi will speak to you. Lay your hand on your stomach. Ladi, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this, this, this frustration is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is how I want to pray for you. Mama. Good evening, ma. Just please stand up. Who is the stubborn child that you want God to touch? Lift his picture up. Victor. 
This is your number one prayer. The one you want to marry. Where is the person? The one you want a job for that graduated. Job, job, the one that graduated. The graduates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henry. Mama, this is to tell you that God knows your situation. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This boy needs to be prayed for. So that this boy, so that they will not go and lock him in police station. Yeah? This, I don't know who the boy is, but... Let it stop on, sir. That's what I'm saying, madam. It's okay. You are here for God to visit you. Amen. Amen. Who is Nonso? Nonso. Nonso. I'm hearing the name Nonso. We are going to pray. Nonso. Mama, we are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Very soon. Solomon, you want to marry. He's he planning want... for his wedding, sir. Okay, it's alright. We'll, we'll pray for him. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I pray for you. You came here expecting the power of God to touch you. Exactly. Huh? Yes, sir. Mama, do you want the pain in your body to stop? Yes, sir. You wake yes, up in the Lord. morning and there's severe pain yes, in your Lord. back. Sir, you know about this thing. I know, sir. True. And the Lord is going to do a great miracle for Mama. Amen. Because, Mama, I'm seeing you. You can't wash for long. Yes, you bend down to wash and your back is pain. Yes, Thank you, Father. In the okay, name of sir. Jesus Christ, the Lord who has seen you is going to do a miracle for you. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Help mama you, in Father. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank Please, you, Father. Don't, who is this? Eh? No, so, my friend, are you not so? Help the boy, his trouser is removing. Who is that? Who brought him out? Who should help him now? <laughs> Sir. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? I'm the proprietor of a school. I'm a pastor. I'm a civil engineer by training. You own a school? I do, sir. Primary school? Nursery and primary. Nursery and primary? Yes, sir. You've been afraid to start the secondary school? Seriously, sir. Is that true? Because what is happening in the primary, up and down, up and down, people are taking their children out of your school. And they are owing money. And they are owing money. And you are trusting God for a miracle. Because you too, you need a lot of money now. As you are standing here like this, you need money. Very correct, sir. And this money is much. Don't collect loan. Don't collect loan. Loan is a way to die. Time to destiny. Don't collect loan. Sir, I want to pray for you. One of the things you are going to start seeing as you minister the word is breakthrough. You will start seeing strange breakthroughs. Amen. In the lives of people. Amen. And then we want to pray for your school, sir. Things are going down. Yes. What you need is not money. What you need is very qualified teachers who are really willing to teach you. Because the people there, they will come today, a few months, they want to leave. And when they, you know, they want, I will have to pray for you. The devil is a liar. Please lift your hands, sir. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing for speed come upon you, sir. Supernatural speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and speed for you. Mama, God bless you. Please, who is this? Please, if we have not called your case, just be patient. We are going to pray for the sick now. Why is Mama here? Mommy, please come. Huh? Your son's name is Nonso. What's your name? Nonso. From where? Madam State. You are a student here? Dark. Dark. Who is Shidi? I'm hearing the name Shidi. Shidi. Chidi. Let me pray for the person now. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, 
what you need this one is not i'm not even getting any word for your son or so what god is saying i should prophesy to you is that he's bringing restoration to your life god is saying i should tell you you see that song that i sang at the beginning of the meeting yes we are carry i'm speaking house sir it's finished that's what god is saying i should tell you that is going to bring restoration to your life supernatural restoration right now by the power of the holy spirit hold my hands I'm not getting any prophetic word for you, but in the name of Jesus, may God step in and do a miracle for you. Come, come and get in something. You need to pray. Huh? You need academic breakthrough. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please, why are these people here? Huh? John. You are serving in prison. Have you started serving? Yes. In the place where? In the state books. Father, give him favor. As you go, let there be favor in Jesus' name. Amen. You are what? John. John. From where? Zaria. I said, Sam, Father John. But since you have come out, let me pray for you. Huh? Lay your hands on your chest. You love God? Hi. John. John, look at me. God can give you a new beginning. You hear what I'm saying? It's when I make altar call, John, run and join them. Huh? I'm going to pray for you, but that statement you made is not true. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you see, you have to be serious with God. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. She's older than she actually is. Huh? And there is a there is there is a medical condition. This is a feminine thing that I'm seeing that is responsible for this. Um can I change help, sir? Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, Turen Shima, you, you understand English? I'm seeing happy birthday on top of you, and I'm seeing 50 years. How old are you? Shakaran Kina. Upon me on 66. 1966. How old is that? This woman is 50, but she's looking like 70. The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm seeing something. It's not something I can say in the open, but you need to be healed. And this thing started happening to you since tune you were about 17 years. Yes, about 17 years this thing started. This is a serious woman issue. This is women talk. Father, we cancel this nonsense. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must live in Jesus' name. Beginning from today, experience the goodness of God in Jesus' name. May the Lord favor you too in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the sick now. This, this is our miracle service. Bear with us. We have to deal with these things. You see that there are so many, there are so many situations. We are praying. Everyone, you can be seated if you can or stand. We are soon going to be done. But I want us to pray. Are we together? Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please say it like you are serious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare. that every closed gate standing before my destiny under this corporate anointing swing open now lift your voice and begin to pray please we are not just whiling away time pray participate in the prayer some of us that's what is that's what is affecting our lives every gate every gate every gate every gate every gate Over my finances, over every area of my life, be open now.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I will still prophesy it upon your life. Say in the name of Jesus. I call forth. By the power of prayer. Every helper. Who will give me access. To resources. To opportunities. And to new levels. I call them into my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. This is a powerful prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like you to prophesy. And say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. As I enter this ember months. I declare that the mystery of divine preservation is upon my life. No death, no accident, no bad news. Lift your voice and cancel bad news. Make sure you are praying. Some of you are just looking. Pray. It's a very serious prayer point. No bad news. I speak upon my life the mystery of divine exemption
Rise up on your feet, please. Everybody inside, outside. Don't be tired. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Before we pray on the request, I'd like you to pray and say, In the name of Jesus. How about now? Let's be serious. In the name of Jesus. September, September October, October November, November December, December hear, my hear my voice I speak to you, speak to you. Deliver, to deliver to my life only blessings, only blessings. No, pain, no pain no sorrow no, sorrow. no, regrets. no regrets go ahead and prophesy release power to your future Release power to September. You shut your mouth, you shut your destiny. Release power to September. Release power to October. Release power to November. December. No plane crash. No bus crash. No amp robbery. No terrorism. Hallelujah. Abba la Say in the name of Jesus. I declare. A covering. Over me. And my family members. Wherever they are. The seal of the blood exempts them from strategy. Listen, I shared some months ago, hold on. I shared some months ago a vision that the Lord showed me. I'm not one person who will stand and say I saw this. Sometimes I see these things. I just pray. But it was upon my spirit and I said it. Remember I spoke about the month of September. Everything you see us do here is prophetic. As you speak, it looks like you are joking. But you are releasing power to your future. He said, declares thou that he might be justified. Hast thou commanded thy morning? You don't sit down and it delivers everything to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say in the name of Jesus. The, name of Jesus. the, seal, of the, the seal of the blood is upon my life, upon my life. And, my and my family members. Therefore, Therefore every spirit of death and loss and, loss. and, disaster. and disaster must pass over my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. No, not upon my life. Not upon my loved ones. They are sealed by the mystery of the blood. No accident. No accident. No death. No obituary. No plane crash. something eh? if you want to be serious with God just set your face like a flint and go for it if you want to play games with God then at least be bad and go to hell let it be that you were not serious and you went to hell but that you are one leg in one leg out acting as though you love God acting as though you are not serious there are many ladies who are not serious with God. Many sisters are not serious with God. They are serious with marriage. They are serious with relationship. Huh? They are serious with beauty. Nothing is wrong with all those things. But God. There are many parents. In fact, parents own. I say it with, with due respect. Many of our parents are not serious with God. Especially the fathers. The mothers are serious with God. Pain has brought them to God. But many fathers are dead spiritually. And the family is suffering because of their lack of zeal. 
You pray, they get up and say, keep quiet. Why are you disturbing us? I have a headache, please. Whereas that's the solution to the headache. They stop you. Are we together? Ah. How many parents encourage young people who are serious with God? Stop all this, your Jim Jim thing. We started before you were born. But then they have another younger brother who jumps the fence. And they say, talk, God is helping us. At least he's going to school. You see, you see our rating? You see our rating? Zeal for God. How many homes as a home are passionate about God? How many families have contributed to the advancement of the kingdom? When was the last time many families came together to pray? I, I know when the last time was when there was trouble severe trouble that could threaten the father then we will do fire brigade disturbances and when there is peace we announce everybody should go devotionals morning devotion in many families have died completely completely everybody now does his own you get up if you're a Pentecostal you go outside you go and shout near the fence if you are if you are you are you are and orthodox or whatever you are you just open whatever book you read and sleep while you are reading it and mock yourself no zeal are we together we do everything we want to do with our time and our life then the balance of it is what we give God say God you better be grateful I'm giving you this I mean I'm, I'm getting busier by the day anything that will take God's place in my life I don't care whether it is fame whether it is money may it not just come to may, may it be far from me in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to check your life because you see love hear me love is like energy it can never be created nor destroyed if I used to love you and I no longer love you I transferred it somewhere for sure if I used to love you and I no longer love you I transferred it somewhere I used to love him now I don't love him that space cannot be empty so the question is what occupied it I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart Lord, I will bow. Lord, I will bow to you. To no other God but you. Listen, I'm speaking specifically right now by the Spirit to those who were serious with God before. If nobody has told you it's a problem, backsliding is a very bad thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a terrible thing. To at one time in your life be serious where did you leave the prayers the nights when you called upon his name where did you keep the fasting who preached you into thinking it was not important what relationship make God look no, like nonsense in your life who asked you out and asked God out of your life what job came into your life and removed everything God out of your life. Take what I'm saying seriously. Where did you keep the visions you used to see? You solved the problems in people's lives because of how serious and fiery your spirit was. But right now, everything passes and there is no eye to see again. And you keep moving around. There are many pastors who need to go back for a retreat. They are still standing, moving around as usual. But we know the wine has finished. There's nothing there again. The zeal of the Lord. To the point that many of us are even ashamed now. Huh? You are ashamed now. The only place you are confident about God is koinonia. How after that you are ashamed because God has looked like nonsense to you. Anti-technology. Anti-civilization. Anti-socialization. That's your understanding of who God is. Did our hearts not burn within us as he opened the scripture? Hallelujah. Many fathers have left God since, 
sins looking for money left God sins do you know the number of Christians that patronize herbalists you think if the herbalists were not patronized they wouldn't go and look for something else they are in business alive and strong patronized by Christians look let me tell you you know what I'm saying is not a lie you know what I'm saying is not a lie look we must get back to that place where God is all and in all where God is not just the most important thing there are four keys I'm giving you tonight this is just number one but I must burn it in there are backsliders that need to run to God it's not an insult it's not an insult don't allow people keep telling you you are okay you know when you are not okay you know when you are not okay everything is going haywire in your life it's a message it's a message don't wait till you are destroyed your joy has left you your peace has left you impact has left you passion has left you the gifts have dried from your life how can you say nothing is wrong how can you fool yourself into thinking nothing is wrong let me take an altar call I'm going to take an altar call two fiery altar calls one you need Jesus I'm not giving you any long story you've heard everything I've said you desperately need Jesus two you need genuine restoration you're saying please don't pretend it and, and I'm, I, I don't mean that you just need to step up you were one serious with God for whatever reason sincerely you know between you and God you need a personal revival to come back please I will count one to five nobody is closing their eyes wherever you are inside or outside I want you to stand up and come to the front right now one run like there's fire on the mountain I need revival I can't tell a lie Lord something is wrong with my life I will lay down my idols those of you who are sitting be praying don't be watching who is coming it's none of your business some of you sitting are supposed to be outside so don't sit down watching who is coming and who is not coming I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. Please pray all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Sing it with me. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Yeah. All about you, all about you, all about you, all about you, Jesus. All about you, all about you, all about you, all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All of you who are out, I like you to cry. Renew my passion, oh God. I don't know where it went to, but it must return this night. Renew my passion. Renew my fire. Lord, you are 
more precious than silver Lord you are more costly than gold Lord you are more beautiful than diamond there is nothing I desire compared to I desire compassion. Lord, there is nothing I desire. There is no one I desire. There is no one I desire. There is no one. I desire. Make sure you are praying. There is no place I desire. There is no place I desire. Affect my life, breed on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breed on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breed on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life. Please pray in one minute, all of you in front. Lord, affect my life. Change me. Take away that heart of stone. Replace it with a heart of flesh. Lord, let me stop playing games with you. I mean business. I want to live a life of impact. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Here is my life. I want to live. I want to live. Serving my fellow man. Doing the will of God. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. I bring it back to the altar. Take it, oh God. Here is my life. I bring my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my time. Here is my time. I give you my time. Hallelujah. All of you who are out, I want to pray for you. You have my life. You have my life. You have my life. Hey. Hallelujah. In
in Jesus name in the name of Jesus all of you who are standing outside here whether you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or you are rededicating your life I'd like you to say it passionately as though you are talking to a real person standing close to you say Lord Jesus restore my zeal restore my fire restore my passion I declare this night take your place take your place in my life I mean business with you from today everything that has taken your place in my life regardless of what it is I pray that you rise above it my heart belongs to you my mind belongs to you my body belongs to you take it use it for your glory from today every lifestyle every association that does not please you I part ways with them forever in the name of Jesus I honor you for this decision God bless you please rise up and go back to your seat very quickly celebrate them and thank the Lord thank you hallelujah hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reigns hallelujah sit down sit down sit down let's continue so that's the first key to a life of transgenerational relevance to a life that will make God vow to defend you a life of passion a life of zeal a life that has truly met God number two the second key you need to rise above the tides and the vicissitudes of life is mental transformation. The second key you need, the power of a renewed mind. Someone is under the anointing, you can just carry them to the back. Paradigm shifts, change of mindsets, ideologies altered shifted for good there is so much that God wants to do in and through our lives but our paradigms listen to me please our mindsets our ideologies limit him again and again most believers are taught as powerful as this altar call was it is not all there is to your salvation. There are different dimensions and facets of our salvation. And the consummation of your salvation 
is the renewal of your mind. First Peter chapter 1 verse 9 please. If we can have it in the amplified version. Please hurry up. First Peter chapter 1 verse 9. Shabakato Sapratakata. First Peter chapter 1. Sipraske brandada balada badaba. Mambro sketa rato shela pariata. Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel. And run some captivities. Can you help us, media? Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel. And run some captivities. I like us to read it together. It's projected. One to read. Uh huh. You receive the result, the outcome, the consummation of your faith, the salvation of your souls. It says, receiving the end of your faith, King James says, even the salvation of your soul. The salvation of your soul is the renewal of your mind. When your mind has experientially been brought under the lordship of both the person and the philosophies of Jesus is the culmination of your salvation. At that point, you experientially begin to walk in the benefits and the blessings of salvation. Because the Bible tells us that salvation is a well. There are wells. Not just a well. It said, for with joy shall you draw out of the wells, the wells, the wells, divine health, a life of impact, a life of prosperity, all in that word soteria it's an unencompassing word it's not just translation from darkness to light the experience of the fullness of the life of God in all its dimensions and the Bible says for that to happen the consummation of it is the salvation of your soul the renewal of your mind paradigms and I, I was teaching, I think it was yesterday in the school of ministry, and I was teaching the students, and I taught them that we are programmed in two ways. The first programming is called genetic programming. Genetic programming comes from father to son, in sin did my mother bear me, and so on and so forth. So we, we receive traits spiritually by inheritance, but the second and more dangerous of the programming is environment. It's called environmental programming. Say environmental programming. We grew up in different regions of the world, different regions of Nigeria, under different kinds of parenting, under different kinds of exposure, with different kinds of experiences. Are we together? And so our concepts, our perspectives, our ideologies about God ideologies about marriage ideologies about education ideologies about greatness ideologies about a good life ideologies about you name it diverse ideologies influenced by our environment culture our levels of exposure our failures of the past have all environmentally programmed us now, when you come to God, watch this. When you, got, when you got born again, your mind did not change all of a sudden. Are we together? There needs to be a system of progressive transformation which is dependent on the allowance that you give the Holy Spirit through the world. It's not by force. You can choose to stop and say, Lord, I peg myself at this level. Thank you for all you've done for me. But I cannot continue with you. You are not going to hell. But you sure will not do much for the kingdom. And the quality of your life will be greatly affected. Are we together? There are two dimensions to our work with God. There is an encounter with his presence and his person. That's the first dimension to our work with God. An encounter with his presence and his person. The fruit of that dimension is um, conformity to the image of the Christ. So when you have an encounter with the person of Christ, you have an encounter with the presence of Christ, you are conformed to the image 
of Christ and you rise in character the fruit of the spirit is at work in you your character becomes Christ like that's the benefit of an encounter with the person but an encounter with the person Christ will not automatically change your destiny and the quality of your life you must encounter the principles of Christ you must encounter the mysteries of the kingdom you must encounter the ideologies and the philosophies of Christ it's not enough to have an encounter with the person Christ you must encounter his ideologies his philosophies his thinking his paradigm you must be willing to exalt the word of God above culture above your ideologies above your experience at that point the principles of the kingdom you have now embraced and are practicing will begin to bring new results in your life everybody say new results yeah you are not going to get a new result as far as the quality of your life is concerned with an old ideology the bible puts it beautifully it says no man puts new wine correct in an old wine skin no you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin new wine must be put in a new wine skin so your own assignment is to present a new wine skin and God's assignment is to pour the new wine let me tell you how God makes the old wine obsolete he pours small new wine in the old wine because the Bible says when new wine is poured in an old wine skin it will tear it so God introduces something new to your old mindset and it rattles your philosophy making your beliefs obsolete and you want something new and that's where true transformation begins say change my mind oh God say change my mindset I don't want to begin to tell you how limited our lives can be when we do not sustain a paradigm that is consistent with the word of God and by word of God I mean God's ways of doing things the principles of the kingdom not just scriptures your mindset must come in perfect alignment to God's idea I'll give you an instance as bad and sad as the economy is and I sympathized, you know, um, I was sympathetic to it. We are responsible people. So we don't ignore uh, the reality of what is happening in our society. How be it? In God's system, there is a provision. Say there is a provision. There is a provision for a possibility to experience abundance, even in the midst of famine. Now, it's up to you to work with the mindset that has been proposed as far as school economic theories government policies are concerned or you can switch and choose to adopt the ideology of the kingdom and then you will see the results divine health there is no such thing as divine health in the physical world divine health is only in Christ there is no such thing as that you are expected to be sick once and again all the time every time without exception are we together now, when you begin to adopt the mind of Christ, you now find out that there is a possibility in Christ and there is a provision where a man can rise and that your body can be immune to communicable diseases and all kinds of things that destroy people. A possibility based on another ideology. Where you are today is a reflection of how much space you have given God in your mind. I've taught us here again and I'll repeat it that mindsets are doorways. Mindsets are not like doorways. They are literally doorways. They authorize the entrance of demon spirits to your life and they authorize the entrance of the Holy Spirit to your life. The devil can have limited or almost no access to you if your mindset does not allow him. Even witchcraft, curses and all of these things that have plagued the lives of men these causes have gotten unlimited access through certain mental constructions like fear, the planting of fear, bad ideas that ignites the law of expectation. Are we together? The greater part of deliverance is not casting out the devil that is responsible for that operation. The greater part of, of deliverance is the transformation of your mindset. So your mindset changes so that it does not authorize that operation to find expression again. Because when a spirit leaves, the Bible says it will still come back and check 
he still calls that place my house are we together the transformation of our minds in Psalm 78 verse 41 popular scripture here the Bible says they limited the Holy One they limited the Holy One it was the encounter of those in the nation of, uh, of the, um, the Israelites their sojourn out of Egypt right and the psalmist by the spirit was given a few details there and he said they limited the Holy One they limited the Holy One Psalm 78 verse 41 they limited the Holy One right they said can God make a wilderness how many times have we limited God with our mindsets and our understandings Proverbs 23 verse 7 Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 He leads me and guides me to the city of above He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny He leads me and guides me to the city of above He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny Please sit down. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were still standing. Let's read the A part. Just the A part. One to read. For as he thinketh in his heart, so, this is scripture. The word heart in many translations is interchanged heart, mind. For as he thinketh in his heart, it didn't say so he will be, so he already is. As he thinketh in his heart, your reality a messless expression of your ideology. Listen, let me tell you an uncomfortable truth. The quality of your life right now in all its ramifications with no exception, the quality of your life and my life right now is a messless reflection of our ideologies. What we have been able to understand and what we have been able to authorize. This is an uncomfortable truth. It will take a lot of meekness to admit this what we have been able to understand and what we have been able to authorize. Meaning if we can understand more and we can authorize more of the possibilities of God to find expression, we will rise from where we are to another dimension and another quality of life. Say amen. Koinonia is where it is right now because of the limitation of our mindset. Are we together? Where God has brought us now by grace is dependent on our mindset and our understanding and where we need to rise to we have not risen there already because something about our paradigm is limiting us it could be a paradigm in leadership it could be a paradigm in in organization it could be a paradigm in the anointing it could be an understanding there is something as a person and as a ministry we have not yet gotten to that holds the key to our next dimension if we do not get it we remain here forever if we get it, then we rise. Right? Paul the apostle said, I went up by revelation. You don't go up by desire. I went up by revelation. What have you seen? What do you know? What has changed about your perspective that has improved the quality of your life? There are many well-meaning but nonsense ideologies we carry around. One of the ideologies is the concept of the sovereign will of God. We just believe that everything that happens in our life is the sovereign will of God. A very stupid mindset that has been responsible for the pain of many people. So we sit down and we are irresponsible as far as our participation in the outcome of the events of our lives are and we justify ourselves and say God planned it that's why I'm poor God planned it that's why I'm not happy no sir the will of God is very clear in his word I know the thoughts that I think towards you Jeremiah 29 11 saith the Lord they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end God can take advantage of a situation and turn it for good for we know that all things although not created that way but they can work together for good. It's a system in God's mercy that makes everything to eventually work for good. But that doesn't mean it cost it. 
Are we together? The simple paradigm, this change of mindset that my success and your success does not entirely rest on God and not entirely on me. That there is a partnership. Can I use you again? Please. There is a partnership between God and Joshua Selman for the outcome of his life. If Koinonia must rise, it's not just God alone. It's not just Joshua Selman alone. There must be a partnership. There is a role that is exclusive to the office of God. I cannot do it, but there is a part God will not do for me. If you must succeed in your life, in your marriage, there is a role. As a sister, a husband will not just come because God said male and female. He created them. You have a role to play in being virtuous. You have a role to play in being prepared, submissive, with a meek and a quiet spirit. Are we together? And then God has a role to play in convicting the brother and bringing him into your life. You want to become an exceptional CEO. You want to become a very great person. You have a role to play. To have a teachable heart and the humility to be mentored and to be shown the pathway that leads to a great life. God's own is to back up and reward your humility with the required information and access to the right people. Every outcome in your life, including the prayer of salvation, as free as it looks, you have to participate. This is a revelation many people in the body do not know. So they leave everything to God. Father, I have five children. You gave them to me. I, I release them back to you. If you don't pay their school fees, that's your business. Now, that looks spiritual. I lift it up. There is a book in a library. How to come out of financial struggles. You look at it and pass and go to a restaurant. That's the answer to your prayer. You ignore it. There is free to air. Where a man of God like Samadhemi is preaching from his years of labor. And telling you there is a reason why your life is where it is. You just laugh and say all these men. You change the channel. You have demonstrated your unwillingness to experience that dimension of God. Are we together? There is always a part I have to play. Even in the arrival of the anointing in my life, if the anointing just arrived anyhow, everybody will have it. The anointing does not just land like a plane anywhere. Planes don't land anywhere. They have designated places. Well prepared intentionally for their landing. If a plane lands in a forest, what do you call it? Plane crash. You don't call it plane landing plane crash because it landed in a not designated place. Let me tell you the anointing of the spirit is holy and precious. It will not just land on any head like that. That head must be prepared for the anointing to come. A body has thou prepared. Not a body did you make available. You prepared it. Esther prepared herself to meet the king. The Bible says that Dothan uh, um, um, prospered because he prepared his way before the Lord. Are you preparing your way to be successful or are you hoping that you will be successful? Please sit down. There are many of our loved ones who are not preparing for anything, yet they believe in their hearts that they will be successful. Ask them what they are doing. Ask many pastors, what are you doing for an extraordinary ministry? And they tell you, I'm waiting on God. Wonderful. You finish the fast. What did God tell you to do? There is always something to do to get a desired outcome. There is always something to do to get a desired outcome. God will always commit a responsibility to you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day. Right? that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. It will not happen by default. Hear me, brothers and sisters. There is the labor dimension of faith. There is the labor dimension of faith. There is the labor dimension of faith. It's not free. It's not a gift. So lazy people have no place 
in the realms of greatness completely there is no provision for that say a renewed mind the question I want to ask you very quickly this night is what are you doing to renew your mind what show me the spiritual investments show me the intellectual investments you are making now that you have acknowledged that something about your paradigm is responsible for the quality of your life even if you don't have any money in your hand show me what you are doing I don't mean what business show me the materials you are accessing let me see the voices that you are submitting to for mentorship and, and, and transformation you know in Nigeria everybody is a guy of himself are we together everybody is the boss of himself regardless of how ignorant we are we claim we are the gods of ourselves we know everything we live in a world all by ourselves that's the recipe for failure as bad as this economy is there are people this is about the best year for them so far without exaggeration in every white this is the year their wives gave birth this is the year they became millionaires this is the, the year God shamed their enemies. I mean, they've had, they, they, it's been a bed of roses from January till now. To a point that they're even afraid to testify it. Because people would think they're lying. Yet for others, this is the worst year. They can't wait for December. In Egypt, there was utter darkness. Children were dying. In Goshen, there was life there was light, there was rejoicing. It's up to you to turn your life to Egypt or Goshen. You turn it by light, a paradigm shift. The Bible says, ask for the ancient path. Don't guess, ask for it. It's been found already. There are keys that are responsible for abundance. The key is not business. There are keys responsible for their abundance. There are keys responsible for joy. Joy. There are keys that can take you out of inferiority. Complex. There are keys that can help you rise above failure. There are keys that can motivate you through times of pain. There are paradigms. There are understandings. Please hear me. Hear me in the name of Jesus Christ. Invest in changing your mind. Don't invest in dumping informations in your mind. Make sure the informations are worth um, committing yourself to the light you have must be bright enough to turn your night to morning it's not enough to have light is it bright enough stars shine in the night but you still call it night but when the sun comes night turns to day the light you have is it bright enough to make your night become morning because for as long as it is night weeping endures are we together I am obsessed with knowing where I am missing it in life. My heart is passionate. I pursue wisdom. I pursue wisdom like a jewel that is missing. There is no price that is too much to pursue uncommon mentorship, to pursue wisdom. I listen to people. I listen to ministers whose lives have produced the results that I desire with all humility. That's why I respect the Bible. I don't just read it. I don't just believe it. I truly respect it because this is a compendium of God's wisdom. Any man who walks with the light that is written here will change his life. This is what changed my life so far. How could I ignore it? I don't read it to get a message. I don't read it to cry so that I can speak well. They are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Please pay attention on developing your mind. Jordan bookstore is here. Jordan is here seated. Buy the truth and sell it not. Look for the areas in your life where the devil is singing choruses and marching unhindered and find relevant materials. By the grace of God, we have taught different messages across different places. If the economy is whipping you financial dominion, part one to four, the wealthy place, right? Activating seasons of greatness. Activating breakthrough, the ministry of destiny help us. Extraordinary accomplishment, the cost. Sit down with these teachings and listen to them. And stand up 
with both the knowledge and the impartation and change your life he says they that sat in darkness have seen a great light it was a lamentation in Nephtha and Zebulun he said they that sat in darkness have seen a great light you don't rise because of desire until your light comes you will never rise say amen the Bible tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds to be transformed by the renewing of our minds I'd like you to pray very quickly in one minute and say father every mindset that has limited my life whether it came from culture whether it came from my upbringing every mindset reveal it to me and I'm willing to drop it go ahead and pray in one minute very quickly every mindset that is keeping me poor no matter what I do money doesn't come to me every mindset that keeps me limited it looks like I'm a failure in everything in relationships I'm a failure every mindset that makes good things leave me please change my mindset it may not be my fault I inherited it is what my father taught me is what my mother taught me is what my culture taught me people in my family and my lineage that's what they believe but Lord I submit to you lift me beyond culture you raise me up so I can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy sea I am strong when I am on your shoulder you raise me up I went up by revelation listen sit down please your mindset must change years ago the Lord spoke to me and told me that I was hosting mindsets that came sincerely but were responsible for the limitation in my life and because you see let me tell you something by God's grace and by the privilege of God's mercies I've always been a very intelligent person all through my life it's been like that God's grace on my life and intelligent people are arrogant people it's very difficult for them to admit there is something more that they do not know are we together and so when God brought me to a point I had to break my pride and say look young man you grew up in a family under a father and a mother, under a culture, under a government, under a system. And your life is inevitably a reflection of their highest level of mental transformation. And so their limitation has now become your limitation. The height they got to is where you are now. And if you don't know more, you will remain there forever. You want to rise higher? It's not just my duty alone. You must get new information and I started sitting down under the mentorship of great men like Bishop David Oyedeko, great men like Dr. Miles Munro, Dr. Mike Mudok. I wanted to change my mind. I was humble and I was intentional about it. The things I read stung my ego. Some of their teachings directly insulted me, but I had to humble myself and say, look, I needed this. I wanted the anointing of the spirit in my life I met a lot of people who were not anointed and they told me what they felt was the formula I tried it it didn't work and I knew that that was why they were not anointed so I started looking for those who were truly anointed like Benny Hinn and I found the secrets love everybody but don't follow everybody please be very unapologetic about not following people who do not have results it doesn't mean you castigate people doesn't mean you criticize people I have no loyalty for anybody who doesn't have results you can teach me how to live well a social life how to be a kind person but when it comes to the areas I want results I find people who have exceptional results that are a bar and a standard that's why I love Jesus his life inspires me when I read about Jesus I'm amazed at how invincible he was who you are following who you have allowed access to your mind is shaping the results of your life. 
And that's why every pastor must know that every member that sits down under your anointing and under your grace is a trust from God. They bring their minds and they bring their experiences in submission. Two hours, three hours every week for the rest of their lives. You better don't give them trash. You've got to give them something that will grant them access to rise. That's why every man of God must not only be anointed, you must be vast. Go for information and bring time-tested principles that can help the people of God. They will thank you, they will market you, they will bless God and they will pray for you. But you teach men junk that destroys their life, they will hate you, they will curse you and they will make sure they participate in the downfall of your life and your ministry. Number three, time is gone. The third key you need to rise above the vicissitudes of life. The third key you need to live a life of transgenerational relevance and impact. The third key is the discovery and the development of yourself and your abilities. Oh, I could spend the whole night teaching on this. The discovery, write it down. It's not as simple as you think it is. The discovery and the development of yourself first your intrinsic value not just what you offer yourself the discovery and the development of yourself and your abilities in one word value everybody say value those who are enjoying right now regardless of the economic recession those who are enjoying right now regardless of government policies are those who have proven themselves to be men and women of value men and women of value value is a description of the solutions you possess that can change the life of a person and a territory value is a description of the abilities you have that can prefer pragmatic practical solution to the problems of mankind I was teaching we're on a series the last series in the school of ministry and his finance and I was teaching the school of ministry and I was challenging them yesterday and telling them that the reason why many people are poor is not because of witches and wizards they are poor because they do not have any value in exchange for the rewards they desire they want rewards without value are we together someone can look at this ministry and see how God has helped us financially and with the level he has helped us and think how can young people be this blessed it's not about being young it's about being valuable are we together when a woman who has been barren for 10 years comes and in 2 months she takes her child that's result say result shout it again that's exactly what you need to prosper results not stories creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God they are waiting for the manifestation that your life becomes an unending stream of results for people if Christianity didn't have results you would not be part of it I guarantee you salvation is a result Jesus said it he did it we are witnesses and participants so we worship him are we together anybody who cannot produce results in our economy today is the person who will beg forever all kinds of results a pastor who does not stay with God to have dramatic supernatural results I don't mean falling down and rising up results of salvation results of changed lives results of the supernatural at work in the lives of people no results no value no reward it's as simple as that the discovery and the development of your giftings of your ability is the key to your exit from a life of mediocrity listen to my message activating seasons of greatness i teach there that the secret of greatness is favor but that favor does not happen on its own favor is dependent on many factors the gift of a man proverbs 18 16 the gift of a man and i always add the gift that is developed and deployed not discovered crude oil that is discovered does not bring money when it is refined then it can bring you resources. There are many of us who are sitting on gold mines and yet languishing in poverty and pain. There are families with potentials to rise above certain realms of mediocrity, spiritually and otherwise. 
but the inability to discover and develop our giftings this is a gift it has earned people money Don Muen has blessed the world with it he's also eaten with it this thing I'm doing proffering supernatural solutions has brought wealth to people and has blessed others in ways that are beyond imagination listen you must make up your mind that you are going to be a man or a woman of extreme value extreme value make sure you don't just write value extreme value intellectually spiritually extreme value you must be a master at something that is in demand and people will veto your background they will veto your limitations and they will bless you and call it a privilege value are you valuable tell me what about your life will make me desire you tell me what about your life will make me pay you and not feel the pain I told you the true measure of your value is when no amount given to you for your value becomes too much when people can give you 10 million and still call it a privilege you are extremely valuable no man is indispensable but there are people who are very difficult to replace may you be such a person in the name of Jesus I made up my mind that I will be extremely valuable as a man of God extremely valuable as a leader and the key is not to make noise the key is not to snap pictures and go on Facebook snap near a Lamborghini the key is not to go around and, and carry all kinds of shirts huh? Angela Galasso and wear Tom Ford and say so oh, these are designers I'm wearing it that's not the key to be valuable the key to be valuable is to sit down invest in yourself sharpen your gifts Kabaratakaya as a man of God that when you hold the mic and you teach the word of God as you minister one hour under your anointing somebody is waiting with an envelope to sow and he says sir grant me the privilege to tap into this grace Jesus prepared for 33 years for 30 years he made himself extremely valuable we've not reco recovered from the honor we accrue to him today question are you valuable in your place of work are you valuable right now they are downsizing people if they downsize you you are not valuable it's as simple as that are you rising to a place of value I told you there's no such thing as learned that, that is our, our our civilization has made that concept extinct you are either learning or you are unlearned there's no such thing as I'm learned progressive growth progressive development and David served his generation pastors are you preparing to serve your generation business people are you preparing to serve your generation if you have a restaurant and um, in this day and age your food is still smelling smoke you are not serving your generation you are serving a generation that does not need your service are we together if you are a professional typist you are not serving your generation the generation that needed you has gone are we together are you getting what I'm saying you are a tailor are you serving your generation don't say people are not coming why should I come can you serve me are we together you are fixing phones and I bring a phone of 200,000 and you look at me and say eh, sorry sir this is not the type we fix I will not come again because what you said is that I have pegged myself I have refused to develop myself to be able to provide services at that level are we together yeah the minimum standard in the world is excellence you must prepare to serve your generation I preach in all kinds of places and I can tell you it's not just preaching by the anointing alone you must understand the systems and the environment and the protocol of where you are going to by the truth please I like you to challenge yourself and say I must be valuable say it stop envying people stop getting angry stop wishing 
Rise up and be valuable. Being valuable may require you taking extra courses and trainings. Some of us, what you want to be valuable about may require you going to school again to further. Some of you, being valuable will require you sitting with certain levels of books. Some of you, it will require you being a protege to a mentor directly over a season to learn. Whatever price it takes to have capacity to serve your generation, go for it. Are we together now? Yes. Be valuable. It's not what you are doing. It's how you are doing it. Develop your gifts. Develop your gifts. In this day and age, you want to be a worshiper. You come and hold the mic and you are chewing your mouth. You are talking rubbish. People don't have... There are too many options. Too many options. As a keyboardist, you can only play two or three keys. You are not a keyboardist. You are, you are, you are a freelance... Um, explorer of your hobbies <laughs> anything worth doing is worth doing extremely well it was our fathers who say it's worth doing well now it's not worth doing well it's worth doing extremely hear what I'm saying you claim you're a consultant I give you a material to prepare for me arrange it intelligently and you write nonsense your grammatic construction rubbish right your the points your persuasions are nonsense all your facts are outdated will i come to you again will i come to your institute again no sir even if you are my brother call it david school of research i'm not coming there again call it whatever you want to call it we must strive for excellence we must strive for mastery. The Bible says, and if a man desires mastery, yet is he not crowned until he strives lawfully. There are rules. It says, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all. We've taken time, we're going to pray, but I want you to get this. You must get it. You must get this. You must get this. Proverbs 22 verse 29. Proverbs 22 verse 29 Seest thou a man diligent Seest thou a man flawless Seest thou a man creative Seest thou a man exceptional In whatever it is that he does There is an assurance That he shall stand before kings He shall not stand before mean men The reason why many people are standing before mean men Including pastors the reason why they may never invite you to speak in a meeting or a conference somewhere is you have not proven to have the ability. You may have the anointing but you've not worked on your communication skills. You stand on stage and twist your tongue. Nobody is hearing what you are saying. You preach like you are talking to yourself. You are not clear. Your points are not objective enough. They are not persuasive enough. You may be anointed but you may never go far. When you are talking to your villagers they will hear you. When you are talking to the world, they won't hear you. So if you want to remain in your village, you act like them. You think like them. You talk like them. When you want to rise, you become world class. You reinvent yourself. Nobody was born with anything. You can re-engineer yourself. Are we together? Challenge yourself. You are a tailor. All your customers have all the clothes they need. Go and reinvent yourself. Go back for a three months training. Go, to, go somewhere. Meet someone who has been trained in UK or in Italy. Meet someone who has worked with a designer company. Don't work with mediocres. You will be like them. And don't let anybody preach you into thinking all that is required for greatness is just prayer. You need to reinvent yourself. It's a lie that many people have carried for a very long time. And they are paying for it right now. It takes more than prayer. You must prepare yourself. Nehemiah on one hand held the sword. On another hand he was building the fence. I Daniel understood by books. The Bible says buy the truth and sell it not. Men will not give you free money like that. The days of free lunch are over. Until you show what value you have. That merits being a millionaire. Everybody just jumps. I'm a millionaire. Ooh, glory. We keep mocking ourselves. 
You don't become a millionaire by jumping. You offer the value that will compel millions coming to you. God can give you access. It's up to you to take advantage of the access. So I go back working on myself. I'm not satisfied with the level of value that I'm communicating. Now I'm telling you, the level of anointing that I desire to walk in, I've not even come near it. I've not scratched the surface to it. The level of grace and the, the dimension in the spirit that I trust to be operating in. Hmm. You get to a dimension where everybody who comes to you knows his life is changed. His own sacrifice is just to see you. Hmm. That is such a realm. When you get to that realm, no witch, I guarantee you, no wizard, even if the wizard comes for service, he will be part of those who will bless you. At that level, you don't pray for needs again. You just pray that the needs don't kill you. Are you ready to reinvent yourself? Are you ready to sit down don't run around with albums. I want to produce album. The producer who is producing doesn't know what he's doing. You, the singer, doesn't know what. You don't know any rules about music. You want to produce your album because you are hoping the members in your church will buy it. I don't listen to a song just because it's spiritual. I have ears. Physical ears. I listen to a song that is musically sound well composed, intelligently directed and spiritually presented that's the kind of thing to listen to are we together you serve restaurant, you say the most important thing is the balanced diet, no, I eat emotionally before physically I need to eat with my mind, my eyes my mouth, all of them must participate in the food, if it's not presentable carry your food away, I will not buy it I'm a member of Koinonia. I, I bless God for you. I will keep blessing you every Friday, but I'm not going to come to your restaurant. As simple as that. I bring you clothes as a tailor. You sew what you want to sew. Put pockets anywhere. Put the design anywhere. And waste materials anyhow. I'm not coming again. Very simple. Please reinvent yourself. Turn and prophesy to somebody. Say, be valuable. Be valuable. Our time is up. We're going to pray, but be valuable. Go for knowledge. Don't snore your destiny. Almost every information you need to rise is free. You just need to have the discernment to access it. It's free, but it's not cheap. It's free, but it's not cheap. I don't like lazy people. Truly, truly, I resent an attitude of laziness. People who are complacent with where they are. No, sir. You should rise to a position where no devil and no culture. As far as I'm concerned, Koinonia has not risen to one-tenth of the level of excellence we should be. All what we are doing compared to where we are going is rubbish, complete rubbish. It's just that we will permit this just because we are still preparing for that level. This, this is complete nonsense. No, this, this does not look like the blueprint. Are you challenging yourself to that level? Miracle services... This, this miracle service, this one is this, this is Tuesday prayer band in fact this is not even Tuesday prayer this is depart unit meeting by the time we truly start miracle service in Koinonia you will know it's a miracle service hmm. that's what we should do refuse to be satisfied where somebody comes for Koinonia on a wheelchair and just as he crosses that place just crossing that place he stands up the service has not started. And then nobody shouts because we see it all the time. Now that's a level. That's a dimension. Where every woman who delays doesn't give birth to a child, gives birth to at least twins, minimum. Restoration plus breakthrough in one equation. Now that's result. You carry a dead body and just put him close to any car, anybody. The security man's gone, just touches the child and he comes back to life. It's a level. We can rise to that level. In your joke, you are joking, yet he's bringing the anointing. Because of how much you are infused with the anointing. Next week, we'll talk about the last dimension. Rise up on your feet, please. I'm tired of the status quo. 
There's gotta be more than this I'm tired of the status quo There's gotta be more than this There's gotta be more, gotta be more There's gotta be more than this There's gotta be more, gotta be more Point number one, Lord, I'm tired of where I am. Take me higher. Take me higher. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of my level of life. This level is bringing me pain. This level is bringing me limitation. Intellectual limitation. Spiritual limitation. Leadership limitation. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. Lord, I express my dissatisfaction for this level of life. For this level of life. For this level of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, access to information that represent my mindset for the next level. Bring it to me. Pray. Access. Materials. Books. Men. Supply of superior information. I cannot remain at the mental level that caused the problems I am in now. I need a higher mentality. Higher than culture. I need a higher paradigm. A higher paradigm. Pray. I embrace transformation. The renewal of my mind. The renewal of my mind. The editing of my paradigm. I embrace a life of excellence. I embrace a life of competence. Mindsets that are limited. Ideologies that are limited. I drop them. I drop them. I drop them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wrong mindsets about ministry. Wrong mindsets about business. Wrong mindsets about education. Wrong mindsets about marriage. Wrong mindsets about finances. I drop it. I drop it. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number three. Lord, you have given me gifts. Help me to sharpen those gifts so that they will stand me out. Lift your voice and pray. You have given me gifts. I am gifted. But my gifts have not been bringing rewards. My gifts have not brought honor to my life. I pay the price. I sharpen the gifts. Grant me grace. I pay the price of research and development. I pay the price of skill acquisition. I pay the price to sharpen my gift. I insist no mediocrity. I insist no average. I insist no mediocrity. I insist Hallelujah Hallelujah You are only ready for favor When your gifts are ready to go 
you are only ready for favor when your abilities are ready to go don't pray for favor you will not be fair on the person who is showing you favor what are you giving in exchange don't pray for customers when your business is not outstanding enough don't pray for customers don't pray for grace pray for skill don't pray for customers don't pray for opportunities pray for access to light lift your voice and say lord grace to develop myself grace to develop myself i'm tired of average accrediting myself by myself in mediocrity i expose my mind i expose my mind i explore possibilities i want to rise beyond the limitations created by my background i want to rise beyond the limitations created in my life hallelujah 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 last prayer point lord keep me dissatisfied until i change let me not rest wake me up in my sleep when they are clapping for me keep me dissatisfied until i change until i improve until i become anointed keep me dissatisfied keep me dissatisfied until my gifts are sharp enough keep me dissatisfied Hallelujah. Please, I want to challenge everybody. Go and buy a notebook or whatever device you use. Write there personal development of my gifts. Write out everything God has given you that can stand you out and start sharpening it. Don't pity yourself. You may not sleep in the night. Sharpen it. Don't let sleep destroy you. Sleep has made many people poor. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the eyes, and poverty comes upon you like an armed bandit. Ladies, don't say I'm a woman. Don't say I'm a lady. Go and sit down and sharpen your gifts. If it's cooking, sharpen it. Don't cook your food to eat it alone. Cook a kind of food that presidents can eat. Sharpen your gifts. You're a man of God. Don't run around looking for ministrations. Sit down. Open this Bible. Just, you don't even need to read too many books. Just sit down and understand the word of God. We, we roam around too much. You know, sometimes I come out in the afternoon and I see people broad daylight roaming around as if they don't have what to do with their lives. Gisting, gossiping from one place to the other. You close from work. Go home and build yourself. You travel to go and see a friend. Go and gossip about this. Go and cause trouble in somebody's house. You sit down. Please commit yourself to development. There is no way out of poverty if you don't develop yourself. It's not magic. It's not a charm. God is not a genie. If you want to be outstanding, you want to be a territorial principality, you must have something to offer. And it's not just prayer alone. Don't just package yourself. Have content. Content indeed. You are an artist. Have you not seen other drawings? Are you not seeing the rubbish you are doing? Improve yourself. You keep putting banners all around for your designs. I will never come. And everybody who thinks like me will never come to you. It's not demons. You are not competent enough. I have a computer center. You are not producing anything. 
you produce late you don't do a good job your papers are inferior everything is inferior your customer care is inferior why in the world should I come when there are alternatives you make popcorn your popcorn is burnt you are not hospitable you are not serious you open late you close early you will be poor for sure you go late for work you go to work by 12 you are part of the ghost workers they are going to drive soon please work on yourself I'm being sincere with you I know that I'm hard on us this night but you will thank me in the days to come don't be lazy don't, don't sit down and say I'm a child don't pamper yourself those of us with children begin to train them put that mindset of seriousness and vision let children roam around anywhere once they, are, they attain an age of discretion let them sit down habits can be imbibed produce champions not mediocres this is what has destroyed Africa we are fetish about everything we have taken the issue of demons outside of the jurisdiction and we justify our carelessness with mysticism you can't be close to me and not be serious you must be consistently developing yourself otherwise you will not be close to me for sure it's not just prayer many of you think that this ministry what you see being done is just because apostle is anointed I wish it's just the anointing there is a labor dimension of ministry you access wisdom you pay the price when you are sleeping I'm awake so when you see a man's reward don't covet the reward look at the price that is being paid first don't sit down there saying these are young people no if you can pay the price you can carry the goods father in the name of Jesus I pray tonight you have challenged us tonight to have passion for you you have challenged us tonight to contend for renewal you have challenged us tonight that the key to our wealth is our value the key to our wealth is your is our value Lord I pray in the name of Jesus let everyone under the sound of my voice and all those following online may they carry this fire in the name of Jesus Christ create a dissatisfaction in their spirit Lord there are people you need to take sleep away from so that they can settle down and be serious with their destiny Lord we declare as individuals and as a ministry that we are not in recession in the name of Jesus we sympathize with our nation and we ask that you bring this nation out of recession but Lord we declare that these principles will exempt us let none beg in this place oh God let none be a failure in this place let none be a weakling in this place raise men and women of influence you have told us this is a year of multiplied grace and influence multiply the grace upon our lives multiply our influence in the name of Jesus give Jesus praise everybody Hallelujah. dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus I'll see you again bye